I need. Ooh, okay, okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> So today is going to be a fun day. I've come to LA to visit the ex-NBA star Steve Nash and I've heard he's got some crazy stuff in his house. Hey! hey. Super... Unisport! What's up man? I Come wasn't, on in. I wasn't expecting that. You good? Great. Let's go Welcome. In. I'm going got some good stuff here. I hope so. Let's go. Sorry we got so many boxes and stuff. Do you want to go upstairs now? Let's go upstairs. Steve Nash is a former professional basketball player who was one of the most legendary NBA stars of his era. And while you might remember him as the two-time NBA MVP who later in 2018 will be inducted to the NBA Hall of Fame, today we are visiting the Nash residence to find out more about Steve's lifelong passion for soccer. Get ready for crazy stories, an insane collection of match-worn boots in Steve's basement, Ronaldinho gave me his boots, so did Sam Eto. and of course shooting some hoops with one of the all-time greats in his own private gym. Oh. But first, let's pick his brain a bit to find out where his passion for soccer comes from. I've heard you have a passion for football as well. This is true, yes. My first word was goal and just grew up in a soccer loving household. It's always been a huge part of my family. My brother played for Canada 35 times, I think, and I've just loved the game. It's a really important part of my life. What about when you were young, you know, I assume you played both yeah. football and basketball. Yeah. Why did you end up going? Yeah. Actually, I didn't play basketball. Growing up in Canada, I played hockey, as we call it, soccer, baseball, lacrosse, everything. But basketball, I didn't play until I was 13. But all my friends at a new school played basketball. So all the kids that were playing sports were playing basketball. And so for me, it really was because I wanted to be with my friends. But it was also a great time. Michael Jordan would just come into the NBA. You know, he was this incredibly exciting player. He was doing commercials with Spike Lee, and he had these cool shoes. And so for a 13-year-old kid, it was pretty important stuff. It was one of those things that I just wanted to be with my friends and I fell in love with another game and I let it go. I just still love it as much as ever, but I spent my life trying to be a basketball player from 13 years old on. Obviously choosing basketball turned out pretty well for Steve Nash, who nowadays, just like many great former players, has moved on to doing TV commentary. But unlike most ex-athletes, Steve is not on the American TV screens talking about his main sport, basketball. Instead, he's sharing his knowledge in the UEFA Champions League studio, talking about soccer. Basically, they're bringing in a basketball player who's extremely passionate about soccer to maybe introduce the game to more people. You know, soccer's growing here. There's a lot of great players and fans across the country now, but I think there's also a lot of people that haven't really been introduced to it, you know, where they get to know, you know, some of the stars. Of course they know who Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo is, but, you know, who is Harry Kane and who is Paulo Dybala and who are some of these guys that maybe aren't on the tips of tongues here in the United States, but are incredible players, incredible skill, great athletes, great personalities and have great stories. I think we should head down to the basement. I've heard you got some good stuff over there. Let's see what I got for you. I know you've been around the world and seen some good stuff. <laughs> and, uh, maybe I have a couple stories. That's good. This is my pride and joy right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is it. This is, uh, a lot of people say the man cave, but this is like the basement. <laughs> the basement. It's not a great name, but it has everything I want. You know, I have some of my memorabilia, uh, coffee, and I have the, the pitch, the, the stadium. So what more could you ask for? I have some great, important memorabilia. The, I have Zidane, Ronaldinho, Samueletto's boots, and I have the torch. I was lucky enough to be one of four Canadians to light the uh, Winter Olympic cauldron in Vancouver, 2010. Yeah, so amazing. I had a mutual friend with Thierry Henry, and I was in Paris and my friend said, Thierry wants you to come to Clairefontaine, the Maison de Football in, in France, outside of Paris. And so I went to Clairefontaine, you know, a nervous little schoolboy, and met Thierry and Zidane and Olivier Decor and Pat Vieira. And then me and my cousin kicked around with Thierry and Zidane for an hour in between their training sessions. Wow. That was unbelievable. And they had security guards in suits in the forest around the field. It looked like Secret Service or like <laughs> President Obama or something. 
Now at this point, it became clear to me that Steve would have an unlimited amount of crazy stories to share with me. So next, I wanted to hear more about his crazy collection of football boots. Match worn by some of the finest players of all time. Nice. Wow, this is amazing. Barcelona had a preseason in the United States and they were in New York City where I was at the time and so I went out to training. The guys were incredible. They brought me in the dressing room. Ronaldinho gave me his boots, so did Sam Eto. They introduced me to this little kid that was 17, I think, at the time, and Ronaldinho mm. says he's gonna be the best player in the world. You watch him play and right away you're like, wow, this guy's unbelievable. And if Ronaldinho says he's gonna be the best, maybe he is. But you also remember how good Ronaldinho was. So at the time you're thinking, there's no way he can be as good as you, right? Well, he is. <laughs> and obviously you're talking about Lionel Messi. Yeah, Lionel Messi, I mean, he's this little guy in this room full of stars, and you watch him train and you realize right away this guy's special. And that was a great experience to meet him and to, to see him train at a young age and to see the possibilities. Is he done? Catch. Yes. You know, as you can see, Zizou wore these out. Who, you, who would think that, that Zidane would put tape on the, on the back of his boots, but... Uh, I like the fact that you haven't removed the tape. No, no, no <laughs> chance. Obviously, he taped them up. You know, I actually was similar as a player. Um, you know, you could wear a new pair of shoes every game, but I like having my shoes worn in, so I'd wear them for two or three weeks, and I'd wear a separate pair for practice that would I'd wear for the games, like, in a, in a couple weeks. So I guess Zizou liked them uh, nice and worn in, so they felt comfortable in his foot and as you can see he's beat these up a little bit but uh, it was a great experience I'll never forget it. Looking at this little basement. Basement. Man cave. Man cave. You want. Yeah. I don't see a lot of basketball stuff like is it like somewhere <laughs> around the corner or like? <laughs> well there is there is actually a picture with President Obama and one of my teammates Grant Hill and uh, we went to the Oval Office to meet uh, the great man and Shot some hoops with him on the on the basketball court at the White House. How was he? President Obama, he out can of respect, ball? can shoot. He can shoot and he can play. I actually have a great story about that. He was in his suit and we, we had a great chat in the Oval Office. And he says, you know guys, I really wanted to go down to the court and shoot with you guys today, but we're passing a bill. It was a Saturday and they were passing a bill. And so he's like, so I, I, I just don't have time to get down there. So we went down there, having a good time, and all of a sudden we hear, hey fellas, and we turn around, President Obama's walking on the court, taking his jacket off. He's got his shirt and tie on, rolls his sleeves up, and he starts shooting with us. And we're like, this is amazing. So we're shooting, talking, having, a, he's asking us questions, we're asking him questions, having a great time. And then he's like, well, he's like, I gotta go fellas. He shoots, he misses. And I'm like, I'm like, Mr. President, you can't leave on a miss. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you know what, you're right. So I pass it out to him, three-point line, he shoots it. I mean, pure swish, and as it's going in, he like looks at us and like, that's how I roll. Goes and gets his jacket and takes off. I was like, boom. <laughs> I was like, this guy's got balls. And uh, I'm, I'm, wow. glad he, I'm glad he's our president. When was the last time you got starstruck? President Obama for sure is like the person I admire the most. I think he's, you know, incredibly intelligent, charismatic a great role model for my kids and myself. And so he's somebody that I think is just on another level as far as human beings go. But obviously whenever I see any of these athletes, whenever I saw Zidane and Thierry, uh, Ronaldinho, um, you know, whenever I see my Tottenham boys, the picture with Christian Eriksen, Vic Wanyama and Eric Dyer, like, that's when I really feel like a kid. Even though I'm just turned 44, uh, I get a chance to get on the pitch and have a few touches with those guys. It's like, I realize how lucky I am. In case you didn't know, Steve is a lifelong Tottenham Hotspurs fan and being as well connected as he is, Steve's had the ultimate pleasure of training together with his favorite football team on multiple occasions. Now let me just point out that this guy is one of the greatest NBA legends of all time, but judging by his footwork, he could have done well on the football pitch as well. You got some moves. You I'm got okay. great ball control, you know, you're playing Rondo with Christian Eriksen and Harry Kane, like, how do you keep up? Yeah, I'm okay. You know, it's one of those situations where you try not to embarrass yourself. Just keep it simple, <laughs> keep it moving, quick touches. Obviously, I respect the speed of thought as well as the touch. It's like they've been doing it their whole life, which they had, you know? It's like they were born to do it. It shows me how many hours and how many touches it took to get there, and that's really inspiring for me. So I always love 
you know, getting to see up close and personal how great these guys are behind the scenes. To see them behind the scenes when like the you know, pressure's off and there's no cameras on is always a treat because there's a little bit of extra ingredient in there when they're relaxed that's amazing to watch. Obviously you have your basement and you get to shoot around in here. Do you sometimes go out to play some pickup games or? No. No? I don't play basketball ever since I retired. What about soccer? I play twice a week. You know, a little seven, eight, nine aside, little small goals. Yeah? It's fun, we have some great players come. Nice. And then some everyday people. Obviously you're one of the best point guards of all time. Thank you. But you know, these moments when you get to kind of like live your dream, did you ever think like, man, I wish I continued with soccer. Well, I do. The dream is still alive. I, <laughs> I, I, I every day have a part of me that feels like that little kid that still wants to make it. But, uh, you know, the reality is I think I had some ability to play football, but so do millions of kids around the world. And so, you know, if I had to put the time into football that I did into basketball, which was a lot, who knows, maybe. But I'm also not silly enough to just think, oh, you know, because how many talented footballers, it's the most popular sport in the world, people playing it everywhere, have you seen, right? You've seen them all over and very few of them make it. I really respect the top footballers a lot. Everybody wants to be, let's say, a professional top level athlete. Sure. But what is something that, you know, people don't know about maybe the sacrifices yeah. or the daily, is it all just like, you know, Houses sure. and, yeah, no. you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's funny, you know, like it looks very glamorous. Um, but like in the NBA, in my career, quite often you would have a back-to-back -back game where you'd play, you'd fly to a city, you'd play, you'd get on the plane and land in another city two or three hours away, get to bed at four or five in the morning and have to play that night on TV with reporters telling you you didn't make the grade, you know? So when you're coming off that plane at three or four in the morning in Milwaukee, and there's nobody there and no cameras and you're like groggy, you, can barely, you just fell asleep for 10 minutes at the end of the flight, it's not very glamorous, you know? That's the part I think that some people don't understand. And, and the other thing is, you're lucky if you start the season 100% healthy, right? And then after that, nobody's 100% healthy, right? So you're always playing with something, something bothering you, whether it's an injury or a niggle, something's bothering you. So. That's the one thing I don't think fans understand is that when you play that many games and you travel that much, you train that much, something is always hurting. It's a challenge because you're playing the best guys in the world and if you step on that court, no one cares what you're carrying, right? So that's the beautiful part of it and I miss that part of it. Now, the last thing on my list of things to do with Steve Nash was to play some basketball with him. And to put things in perspective, this is like shooting free kicks with David Beckham. So in other words, there was simply no way I would miss out on this opportunity. Nice. Did you play a little bit? I just like, you know, shooting, shooting the ball. Yeah, you got good technique. Get that elbow pointed at the rim. Huh? Elbow pointed at the rim. Yes, there you go. Good technique. Not Believe bad. it or not. We, we got something to work with here. <laughs> yes. Woo! Yes. 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 I'll take that. <laughs> nice. You got, you got some game. I think you could develop into a nice player. What about my height, man? It's okay, we've had, small, we've had smaller guys in the NBA. A lot of good players. There it is. Oops. No! You got it. <gasps> oh! Woo! Slam dunk. One of my last questions, you know, obviously you have a lot of things going on, but you know, what kind of goals do you still have? Well, other than to play for Tottenham Hotspurs, uh, you know, I want to make transformative sports content, tell stories and make content that gets people moving and active or inspired or aspiring to do things. I want to see Real Mallorca in La Liga, uh, again, where they belong and have been in the past. And just trying to learn, you know, always trying to learn, always trying to challenge the traditions that I believe in. That's always exciting for me to learn and challenge in my way of thinking. Wow, guys and girls, I truly hope you enjoyed this amazing experience as much as I did. Steve Nash is not only an incredible guy who, by the way, just so happens to be one of the biggest NBA legends of all time, but he also has a massive passion for soccer. And on top of everything else, he's one of the most humble, massive superstars 
I've ever come across in my life. And trust me, I've met quite a few during my time here at Unisport. He shared some amazing stories with me and I would love to hear which of the stories was your favorite. Make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. And also, if you want to see more stuff from Steve Nash, make sure you click on the link right up here to check out his YouTube channel. And in case you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Unisport Web TV by clicking the green bubble on the top right corner of your screen. I've had an incredible day. I'm gonna continue enjoying LA. Steve, it was an absolute pleasure. Thumbs up.